So this is another first class cricket academy uh, YouTube video joined by Harry and Raj. Obviously, people that are viewers of the channel know uh, their work they've been doing with first class cricket academy. Both obviously played uh, first first class cricket in India. Uh, do you guys want to just introduce yourselves and your, your level of playing experience, etc. For those that don't know. I'm Raj. Uh, I played first class cricket in India between 1989 and um, 2000. Um, played 25 games for Tripura. I also um, represented E-Zone in the Deoda Trophy and um, played a lot of club cricket here in UK as an overseas and got into coaching um, around 1993-94. Hi, I'm Harry. Um, I played for Delhi uh, from uh, 1997 to 2004. Played around 23-24 matches, including list A games, and uh, moved to uh, England in 2004 permanently. And I've been coaching from 2007. Uh, it was a very interesting thing. I, I was playing a league game, and Raj was empowering, and that's how we met each other. And uh, he asked me, would you like the coaching? And, you know, that's where I started coaching here. Has coaching always been a passion for, for both of you? And what was what was the path? Was it always um, your ambitions to go from the playing side of things into the coaching world? Honestly, I never thought I was going to get into coaching, but um, I don't know anything other than cricket. Yes, I have got a bit of education, but I'm the last person to go and sit behind a desk and do a nine to five job. Um, in India, we used to get jobs because of our cricket. So I had a job at the Central Bank of India, but as my cricket was coming to an end, I knew that I had to look for something because I could not go and work at a bank. During the playing days, you hardly went to the bank, you just played for the bank. So that was completely different, but after cricket finishes, you are supposed to go and work at the bank. I was not going to happen in my case, so I started looking for other avenues and, um, you know, got into coaching. Uh, for me, it's it's like a mixed uh, for me. Uh, yeah, cricket was always my passion, and when I moved here, and you know, I felt like as coaching is a way where you can still connect it to the game, and you can pass on your you know the any knowledge of playing knowledge and you know coaching knowledge you can pass on to the future generation. And that's where I just started. And, you know, I still got a nine to five job and plus the coaching. So I, I kind of like it. So you've been here for over 20 years, coaching experience, obviously played as discussed in India's first class system. So the main million dollar question, what is the difference between India and England when it comes to the coaching side of cricket, fundamentally? First thing is, in India, we do not have any cricket for participation and all the rest of it. So anyone who's coming into the serious side of cricket is coming to go somewhere in the game. It's like a means to an end. So we don't have any social cricket as such. And the cricket that matters is the leagues that the state associations run, and that too, mainly the Premier League. If you are 21, 22, and you're playing, you know, uh, the second division rather than playing the premier division, no one is interested in you. If you're a young player playing in the second division, yes, people might look at you, but once you're above 20 and you're not playing the premier league, no one is interested. And the premier league is such that every player, the profile of the player is completely different. So it is going to be ex first class players, future first class players, current first class players, or someone who has missed the first class mark by a whisker, and, um, or uh, very good young players coming up. Most players are paid players, like up north as you get in the Bradford League or in the Liverpool comp. So uh, most players are paid players, and you have very few of these four pound 50 players who pay to play cricket. We don't have that system. So if you're playing cricket, you're playing serious cricket, otherwise you're not playing cricket. So that's the basis on which our cricket is built. And on a coaching front, if you're talking about 
pathway coaching and uh, that sort of coaching, you are not going to get people who have never played the game or played the game as a hobby going into coaching at that level. You have to have a basic background, a pedigree uh, to get involved in that. Not like in England, like my mom can get a certificate and go and coach because she has learned some buzzwords listening to me and my mates chat cricket at home and she can go get a certificate and get into coaching. So that doesn't happen. So I don't know what happens at academies and, uh, that, and those sort of areas which are not under the purview of the associations. There, you know, you might get qualified and just go and coach without cricket background. But where it matters, the associations, the age groups, the um, uh, academies run by ex-first class players and stuff, there you're not going to get coaches who have never played the game. And I do not mean playing the game as a hobby. I mean playing the game where cricket affected your lifestyle. Um, when I was growing, going, growing back, uh, you know, back in India, so uh, the coaches used to say, you, you playing cricket for just as a hobby or you really want to get somewhere? So straight away, our aim was just to, you know, play for the country. So that was the highest level you wanted to play. So we never thought that just we're gonna learn this game to just play club cricket. So that's the, there was no participation back home. There was like cutthroat. If you're good enough, you're gonna play. If you're not good enough, you're not going to participate. You're gonna pack your bag, go home. So that's the biggest difference I find here. So people just wanna enjoy the game I just play the club cricket, but not thinking far ahead. Why are they playing the game? Is it just only for the fun or to get somewhere? So I think it's affecting somewhere in the coaching as well, where you don't get coaches who played the highest level of cricket so they can contribute back to the game rather than just getting, you know, coaching badges. Coaching badges for me is just the paper. It's basically experience plus coaching Playing experience is very important for the coach. It's just like, you know, any, uh, uh, for me, I cannot teach, uh, you know, I cannot be a doctor because I, I haven't learned, I haven't, you know, never went to school for that. For cricket, I played it and I can teach that, that one as well. You touched on coaching badges. Do you think there's too much emphasis put on it, um, put on it in this country? Yeah, everything is uh, like standardized, isn't it? It works in certain things, but it doesn't work in something like cricket, which where you need to be fluid, you need to be flexible. You can't standardize everything, right? And coaching badges, what do they do? They standardize everything. If Sehwag is asked to bat like Dravid, Sehwag is finished. If Dravid is asked to bat like Sehwag, Dravid is finished. So what's the point in standardizing something? Yes, you need a bit of uh basics after that it is your own style you need the grammar how you write an essay is your problem but that is where i think the indian system is way ahead and that's why we produce so many players that we can now produce three teams to compete in international cricket and how do you how does your specific coaching philosophies differ from the rest in this country obviously with your academy obviously you've had over 16 first-class cricketers come through the system, one, on the, one in Tom Haynes, who is the skipper of Sussex, on the verge of playing international cricket. What has been your success? Simplicity, because it's very, very simple. You don't need to reinvent the wheel because the top players over the la um, last, you know, 100 years have already done the job for you. So if you think of a structure, the structure is extremely simple. You need basics. First, you instill the basics. Then they need volume. You need to give them the volume work. After that, they need to play different types of bowlers on different conditions, different wickets. That's the next step. After that, they go and play matches in different conditions, different places, different wickets, different opposition, and then you start getting a product. So that's very, very simple. The problem is, when you try to complicate this, reinvent the wheel, and try to do things which 
ex-superstars players have done and proven that it works, and we, who have never played Premier League first team cricket because of a badge, go and try and reinvent the wheel and start doing different things. That is where the problem starts. But if you keep it simple, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's boring. You need patience, but that's how it works. If you keep it simple, the boring stuff has to be done. You don't go to a maths class and uh, if you want to be good at maths, you have to do the boring homework at the end of it. Now, there are people who get scared of that because they think that the player is not going to come back and that's going to affect their revenue. We don't care about it. If you get bored, that's the door. You can leave. But you have to do the boring stuff. The boring stuff is what is going to make you consistent, what is going to make you good. If you can't do the boring stuff, go and find another game. When you say boring, are you talking about installing the fundamentals exactly. and, and technique, etc.? Yeah, that's the main part. You instill the fundamentals. Uh, whatever I can do while writing an essay is my problem. But I can't write I is. I have to write I am, I shall. That's a basic fundamentals which I need to have. So if someone is compromising on that or trying to reinvent the wheel on that, there is something fundamentally wrong. So we need to keep the fundamentals as strong. After that volume, after that different bowlers, I'm talking about a batsman's development, and then obviously in different conditions you go and play games. That's what makes a player. There is no other shortcut. Right. But there are people who don't want to put in the work. They want to invent shortcuts. So that is, and then they want to take money off people. If you want to do that and uh, the parents succumb to that, you can't help. But the simple part, the simple part is what we do here. Absolutely simple what has been done. You go to any academy in India, I think it operates on the same principles and values. How do you see the future of cricket in this country? Future of cricket, I'm not sure. The, the, with this uh, franchise thing taking over, unless the ICC really, uh, you know, come in and get a window in a year for franchise cricket, I don't see how international cricket is going to carry on like this, just like the other day Michael Atherton was saying uh, in his article, and uh, the big countries need to look after the countries which are struggling financially, otherwise it is going to be all franchise cricket and there is going to be like, you know, taking the all the eggs out together because franchise cricket ultimately is going to be very boring because what drives cricket is the international rivalry. I don't care about Mumbai Indians versus um, uh, Kings Eleven Punjab as much as I care about India beating Australia. Okay, so that is the main thing. The franchise cricket is okay, a bit of, you know, jam on top. But the real cricket is international cricket. That cricket has to stay and the authorities need to do something to, you know, make it prosper. There's a lot of talk in England about, was it with the new test coach, Basball, aggressive cricket. Do you think that gets lost in amongst the narrative? Do you think, again, technique and fundamentals are getting almost faded out in the conversation? The thing is mindset. The mindset is important and the mindset with keeping it all this baseball and whatever. So um, basically the mindset is play the ball on the merit of the ball. As long as you can do that, everything will fall into place. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, as Raj mentioned, uh, it's a mind mindset. You still, they're, you know, they're just playing more positive cricket. So I think nothing, I don't see not anything wrong in that. But as long they stick to, uh, you know, make sure they don't try and change something else and stick to the positive cricket rather than aggressive. There's a difference between aggressive and positive cricket. You don't mix them. So I think it's working at the moment. And yeah, hopefully we'll see the next test uh, series. I think... Um 
what works for an international side and what works for a young player is completely different. That we got to be careful because we are in the business at grassroots level or uh, younger level. We are not dealing with a Ben Stokes. So Ben Stokes can change gears. My 16-year-old uh, is not mature enough to change gears. So if you have played cricket again, that is easy to understand, but it is the perception that the non-cricketers involved in cricket get that, oh, now it is the McCullum way and everything has to go out of the park. It doesn't work like that. So, and also, you got to see how this brand works when the, they start playing on surfaces which are doing a bit, turning wickets or seeming wickets, how they go about that. And then maybe the final word from both of you about your academy. How does it differ, differentiate from all the others up and down the country in the UK? I think ours is uh, very, uh, you know, the methods are very subcontinent based and uh, um, we are a mixture of East and West uh, um, to some extent and uh, we don't try to reinvent the wheel, that's for sure. We stick to basics and we are patient with the players. We don't ha want a 10 year old to go and start reverse sweeping before he has understood how to hit the ball down the ground. So we go step by step, right? Rather than, cli we climb stairs rather than take the lift. So I think that is the way we operate. And uh, that is how we will operate till uh, I'm involved in cricket here. Yeah, especially with the younger players, you know, from age from 8 to 12 or 13, we always make sure here that, as Raj said earlier, we don't want to change anything. We want to stick to the basics, teach them fundamental of the games, give them the, uh, you know, show them the technique, why we do the things and why it's important for them for now until that age. Later on, every player has a different, you know, they need different needs, they, have, they, they want to learn a different way. But up to 12, we just stay with this boring stuff. I know it's boring, but it works. And it will work for future as well. I think people get confused about style and fundamentals. Style is your own. Fundamentals, there is no compromise. You take anyone in the world who is a top player, they have got their fundamentals in place. Style can be different. But that is where your playing background comes into play. So you got to understand as a coach that is this guy's fundamentals or girl's fundamentals in place. That is the biggest issue. Don't get carried away with the scores because it don't matter what happens in under 12 cricket, under 13 cricket, it does not matter, right? You can't use scores at that stage. Scores come into place a bit later when the boy or girl has uh, attained their growth spurt or they are playing adult cricket as a 13, 14 year old. No point in checking under 12 scorecard because half the people don't know how to bowl, don't know how to set fields, don't know where to bowl. So, so getting too much, reading too much into stats too early is, I don't think it makes any sense. So there's a time for stats and that is when the player is a bit mature, knows what he or she is doing.